The Works of the Rev. George Whitfield, Volume 1, Letter 271. On board the Manava, February 26, 1741. To the Rev. Mr. C. in Boston. Rev. and dear Sir, except a few lines from one who desires seeing, feelingly to cite himself less than the least of all, I hope you received my packet from Charlestown. What happened to me there was only an earnest of future trials. God hath blessed the reading of the prophecy of the prophet, Jeremiah to my soul, as also the history of Joseph, and hath let me see more into the covenant of redemption between the Father and Son. I am more and more in love with the good old Puritans, I am pleased at the thought of sitting down here after with the venerable Cotton, Norton, Elliot, and that great cloud of witnesses that first crossed the western ocean for the sake of the gospel and faith once delivered to the saints. At present, my soul is so stilled that I can scarce proceed. Dear Sir, God with, is with me of a truth. He now gives me a feeling possession of himself. I bless his holy name for sending me to see. It is profitable both for my soul and body. I find the psalmist's words to be true. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. O oh, that I may walk humbly with my God. The language of my soul is this. Correct me when I go astray and lead me in that perfect way. And now, dear Mr. C., I have in some measure unblossomed my heart. What shall I say more? Pray for me both in public and private. Give thanks as well as pray, especially for the mercies of this voyage. Dear sir, I delude till I come to shore, which I hope will be very speedily, being now in soundings. Then you shall hear again, God willing, from your truly affectionate friend, brother, and servant, G.W. The Works of the Rev. George Whitfield, Volume 1, Letter 272, London, March 25, 1741, to Mr. J. H. My dear sir, I wrote to you immediately on my coming on shore. We arrived at Falmouth last Wednesday, was seventh night, and got here the Sunday following. Blessed be God, we had a summer's passage. Many of our friends, I find, are sadly divided and, as far as I am able to judge, have been sadly um, missed, misled. Congregations at Moorfields and Kennington Common on Sunday were as large as usual. On the following weekdays, quite contrary, 20,000 dwindled down to two or three hundred. It has been a trying time for me. A large orphan family, consisting of nearly a hundred, to be maintained about 4,000 miles off, without the least fund, and the dearest part of our Majesty's dominion, also about a thousand pounds in debt for them, and not worth 20 pounds in the world of my own, and threatened to be arrested for 350 pounds, drawn for in favor of the orphan house, by my late dear deceased friend and fellow traveler, Mr. S., my bookseller, who I believe has got some hundreds by me, being drawn away by the uh, M's refusal to print for me, and many, very many of my spiritual children, who at my last departure from England would have plucked out their own eyes to have given to me, are so prejudiced by dear Monsignor W.'s dressing up the doctrine of election in such horrible colors that they will neither hear, see, nor give me the least assistance. Yea, some of them send threatening letters that God will speedily destroy me. As for the people of the world, they are so embittered by my in injudicious and too s severe expressions against Archbishop Tildenson and the author of the old duty of man, that they fly from me as from a viper. 
And what is most cutting of all, I am now constrained, on account of our differencing in principles, principally to separate from my dear, dear old friend, Monsignor J. and C. W. That would be John and Charles Wesley, whom I still love as my old own soul, but through infinite mercy, I am enabled to strengthen myself in the Lord my God. I am cast down, but not destroyed, perplexed, but not in despair. A few days ago, in reading Belza's Life of Calvin, these words were much pressed upon me. Calvin is turned out of Geneva, but behold, a new church arises. Jesus, the ever-loving, altogether lovely Jesus, pities and comforts me. My friends are erecting a place which I have called a tabernacle for morning exposition. I have not, nor can I as yet, make any collections. But let us not fear. Our Heavenly Father, with whom the fatherless find mercy, will yet provide. Let us only seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all other necessary things shall be added unto us. In about a fortnight, though I scarce know an oak from a hickory, or one kind of land from another, I am subpoenaed to appear before Parliament to give an account of the condition of the province of Georgia when I left it. This, I suppose, is occasioned by the party which hath been so inveterated against the honorable the trustees whom they accuse of misemploying the public money. The event, which undoubtedly will be in favor of the trust, you will know hereafter. In the meanwhile, believe me to be your most affectionate G.W. The Works of the Reverend George Whitfield Volume 1, Letter 273, March 25, 1741 To Mr. J. C. My very dear brother, hasten hither with all speed, and then we shall see what God intends to do for and by us. It is a trying time now in the church. The Lord give me a due mixture of the Lamb and the line. Some that have been led astray begin to recover. The Lord make way for his own truths. My love to the colliers and all friends. Many, I suppose, will be shy. I am become a monster even to several who were wrought upon by my ministry. But it must needs be that offenses should come. Otherwise, how should I learn to cease from men? Adoro. Excuse brevity. Hasten and speak face to face with your most affectionate in Jesus Christ, G.W. End of letter 273. The Works of the Reverend George Whitfield. Volume 1. Letter 274. London, April 10th, 1741. To Mr. H. My very dear friend, I ordered Mr. H. to send you some sermons and accounts some time ago. I suppose he has done it. I have been at the Parliament House. The Georgia affair was adjourned. The gentleman seemed apprehensive that my account of the colony would have too much weight. I have somewhat of trial to be in the house. I then remembered what the Apostle said. We are become a spectacle to men and to angels. My appeal will come to nothing, I believe. I have waited upon the speaker. He received me kindly. I cannot yet determine when I shall see you. If you fear, I hope you will pray for me. The Lord blesses my ministry. Salute dear Mrs. H. I will write to her next. But you two are one. The Lord will be with you both. At present I am weak in body, and therefore I must beg leave to subscribe myself. Yours, etc., G.W. The Works of the Rev. George Whitfield, Volume 1, Letter 275, Bristol, April 27, 1741. To Mr. S. M. at London, My dear friend and brother, On Tuesday, April 22nd, I left London and preached on Wednesday and Thursday morning at Newbury, 
to large congregations. On Friday evening, I preached at Bristol, and I have continued to do so twice every day to great and infected authorities. I received your kind letter and thank you for it. I rejoice in the good news from New England. Last night, I rejoiced much in seeing a soul wonderfully exude in God just at the border of death. Great manifestations of divine presence have attended my service. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I am glad to find Mr. S. goes on well. Pray give my love to Brother G. My soul is sometimes weak, but my soul rejoices in God my Savior. I know not whether I shall come so soon as proposed to London. I find it necessary, through the increase of awakened souls, to get a society room built adjoining to our new tabernacle. I pray God to fill it with his glory, and beg leave to subscribe myself, my dear Mr. M., your affectionate friend, brother, and servant in Christ, G.W. The Works of the Rev. George Whitfield, Volume 1, Letter 276, Bristol, April 28, 1741. To Mr. H. H., my dear brother, blessed be God for knitting us together in love. May it continue and increase till consum consumed in eternity. The Lord Jesus direct you. It is now a trying time with the church. Our Lord is now chiefly wounded in the house of his friends. The Lord keep us both from a party spirit on one hand and from too much rashness and positiveness on the other. I speak thus because you seem offended that some affirm that there is no such thing as dominion over indwelling sin, nor rest from working for life holy. Now this is truly certain in one sense. We shall never have such a dominion over indwelling sin as entirely to be delivered from the stirring of it, and the greatest saint cannot be assured but some time or another for his humiliation or punishment of unfaithfulness, God may permit it to break out into such actual breach of his law, and to a gross way too. Let us not be high-minded, but fear. It is equally true that we shall not rest wholly from working for life. For whilst there is any part of us unregenerate, this part will always leading us to the old covenant. Lutheran often complain of the propensity of his heart this way. If we know ourselves, we shall find it to be so with us. But I suppose you have been tenured with the doctrine of sinless perfection. No wonder, therefore, you write thus. May God give you a right judgment in all things and enable you to rightly divide the word of truth. As for assurance, I cannot but think all who are truly converted must know that there was a time in which they closed with Christ. But then, as so many have died only with the humble hope, and have been ever under doubts and fears, though you could not but looked upon as Christians, I am less positive than once I was, less happily, happily I should condemn some of God's dear children. The further we go in, the spiritual life, the more cool and rational shall we be, and yet more truly zealous. I speak this by experience. Dear Brother H., will not be angry with me, I hope, and believe you pray for me. The Lord Jesus carries me on. Many have been convinced at London. I preach here twice daily at large congregations with great power. The Lord, I believe, will bring, yet bring mighty things to pass. I am, dear H., your most affectionate brother, and our dear Lord Jesus, G.W. The Works of the Rev. George Whitfield, Volume 1, Letter 277, Bristol, May 1, 1741. To the Rev. Mr. S., Reverend and dear Sir, I am glad to hear by Brother M. that the Lord is with you. May you increase with all the increase of God. The more we do, 
the more we may do for the dear Lord Jesus. He strengthens me here mightily. I am enabled to speak here with great power, rather greater than when at London. My congregations are as large as usual, and they go refreshed away. This is the Lord's doings. May all that is within us praise His holy name. Exhort the dear London people to pray for us. The Lord be with you, dear sir. Pray for me. Your affectionate brother and unworthy fellow laborer in the Lord, G.W. The Works of the Rev. George Whitfield Volume 1 Letter 278 Glasgow Mar May 5, 1741 To Mr. S. at Wolchester Reverend and dear sir, With this I send you my answer to Brother Wesley's sermon and my account of the orphan house. I have seen your letter to Mr. N., and thank you for your espousing the cause of the poor, despised minister of Jesus Christ. I hope, as I make advances in the spiritual life, I shall show my zeal more and more tempered with true Christian knowledge and prudence. I would willingly have none of my wild fire mingled with the sacred fire that comes down from God's altar. I desire not only to do things for God, but do them in the best manner. I am a poor, unworthy sinner, and yet, O oh, sovereign grace, the Lord works by me day by day. At Bristol, error is in a great measure put a stop to. The Lord manifested himself in the great congregation there, and doth likewise here. Last night we saw and felt his power. I have had the pleasure of seeing dear Mr. P., and I long for that time when I shall see you, Reverend Sir, and all the chosen of God in the kingdom of heaven. But I desire to wait till my change shall come. Dear Sir, please, be pleased to pray for me. I have prayed for you often. I am a weak, sinful worm. As such, pray remember, Reverend Sir, your affectionate, though unworthy, brother and servant, in Christ, G.W. The Works of the Reverend George Whitfield, Volume 1, Letter 279, Bristol, May 16, 1741. To Mr. William W. at Edinburgh, Dear Sir, I receive both your kind letters, and with this send you my hearty thanks for them. I also thank you for your kind invitation of me to Scotland. God only knows when I can come. All I can say at present is, I will come when the Lord permits. Sad tares have been sown here. It will require some time to pluck them up. The doctrines of the gospel are sadly run down and mostly monstrous errors propagated. They assert that the very in-being of sin must be taken out of us or otherwise we are not new creatures. Oh dear sir, exhort all to pray for me that I may be faithful to my Lord, and yet keep gentle in my temper. At present, our dear Lord causes me tri to triumph in every place. His gospel gets ground, and His power is manifest among us day by day. The fields are white, everywhere ready unto harvest. Our Lord, I trust, will gather His wheat into His heavenly garners. My kind respects attend Mr. M. and Mr. D. Had I time, I would write a long letter to each, but I am interrupted. However, I am glad to snatch a few moments to beg a continuance of your prayers for a poor, unworthy worm, and to assure you that I am, dear sir, your affectionate brother and servant in Christ, G.W. End of letter 279 have been read by Peter John Parisius. The Works of the Rev. George Whitfield, Volume 1, Letter 280, Bristol, May 16, 1741, to Mr. E. E. at Sterling, Rev. and dear sir, I owe you much love. Only want of time prevents my writing to you oftener. This morning I received a kind letter from your brother Ralph, who thinks it best for me wholly to join the Associate Presbytery, if it should please God to send me into Scotland. This I can altogether come into. I come only as an occasional preacher, 
to preach the simple gospel to all that are willing to hear me of whatever denomination. It would be wrong in me to join in a re reformation as to church government, as further than I have light given me from above. If I am quite neutral as to that in my preaching, I cannot see how I can hinder or retard my design you may have on foot. My business seems to be to evangelize, to be a presbyter at large. When I shall be sent into your parts I know not, I write this, that there may not be the least misunderstanding between us. I love and honor the associate presbytery in the bowels of Jesus Christ. With this I send them my due respects, and most humbly beg their prayers. But let them not be offended, if in all things I cannot immediately fall in with them. Let them lead me to God. Whatever light he is pleased to give me, I hope I shall be faithful to it. I dare and precious master still carries me on. God enables me to fight my way through. The gospel doctrines, I believe, will yet prevail. I feel a divine power attending my ministrations. I pray twice daily, and am invited to many places. I believe the Lord intends to give me on this side the water for some time. Blessed be God, all places are alike to me. O oh dear sir, pray for me. I am a poor, unworthy worm. I love you tenderly, but am almost ashamed to subscribe myself, your brother, in the best of bonds, G.W. End of letter 280. The Works of the Reverend George Whitfield, Volume 1, Letter 281, Bristol, May 16, 1741. Dear D.A. in London, I am glad to receive a line once again from Dear Brother A., I rejoice that God lets you see more and more into the corruptions of your heart. The more pure you are, the more you will see and bewail your imperfections in thought, word, and deed. The more will you be made to sing, In the Lord alone, and not in myself, have I complete righteousness and strength. The doctrine of electing love is precious to my soul. I am enabled to speak of it seemingly to others. My soul is kept in peace and sweetness. Our Lord's cause need not noise and rashness. I desire that none of my wild fire may be mixed with the pure fire of holy zeal coming from God's altar. I think it my duty to wait, to go on simply in preaching the everlasting gospel, and I believe we shall see the salvation of men. Methinks the cloud be begins to break off your mind. I pray God to keep you from extremes. Brother H is more and more enlightened, but with all more and more quickened every day. He finds there is no such thing as sinless perfection, and yet is pressing after holiness of heart and life rather more than ever. May God make my dear brother A less minded, for indeed I love him in the bowels of Jesus Christ. We have had frequently sweet communion with God and one another. I should have rejoiced to have conversed with you at Bristol. This is my comfort, yet a little while, and we shall converse in the kingdom of heaven forever and ever. My soul is waiting for salvation. I know not when I shall go to Acts Minister. When I do, you shall have timely notice. God blesses my ministry wherever he sends me. I am invited to fresh places daily. Dear Mr. A., I, even worthless I, subscribe myself. Yours most affectionately in loving Jesus, G.W. End of letter 281. The works of the Reverend George Whitfield, Volume 1. Letter 282, Bristol, May 18, 1741, to Mr. I. C., to Brother C., I received your letter this morning, and am just setting out for Whitshire. The Lord hath been much with us. Yesterday I preached three times. At every sermon a sweet melting was observed in the congregation. Last night I gave your sister the sacrament. She is recovering. I afterwards administrated the sacrament at Mr. T.'s, and had a love feast. Jesus was in the midst of us. I know not, but I may come towards London next week. I wondered not at your heaviness. Before every increase of your work, you must expect some trials. Humblings are necessary for your spirit and mine. I return my love to all. I must away. Brother H. rejoices in spirit and joins with me who am ever yours in Christ. G.W. End of letter 282. 
The Works of the Rev. George Whitfield, Volume 1, Letter 283, Bristol, May 23, 1741. To the Rev. Mr. J. My dear brother, I bless God for making anything of mine useful to your soul. May the blessed Jesus breathe upon you day by day and make you eminently useful to the Church of God. I think you write with a kind of prophetic spirit. The Lord only knows how he will be pleased to despoil of me. Great afflictions, I am sure, of having and a sudden death, blessed be God, will not be terrible. I know that my Redeemer liveth. I every day long to see him, that I may be free from the remainder of sin, and enjoy him without interruption for evermore. I desire patiently to wait, till my blessed change shall come. The Lord hath been with me here. There is a great awakening in Wiltshire, and the work is most wonderfully carried on in New England. I hope to send you a letter shortly that will rejoice your heart. I leave Bristol and go through Wiltshire to London next Monday. I then purpose going to Staffordshire, and then through Wales to Scotland. A wider door than ever is open for preaching the everlasting gospel. I have now only time to beg your prayers, and do assure you that I am your most affectionately, though weak and unworthy brother and service, servant in Christ, G.W. End of letter 283. The Works of the Rev. George Whitfield, Volume 1, Letter 284. Bristol, May 23, 1741. To Mr. I.R. at Philadelphia. Dear I, I rejoice to find that you see feel, and bewail the plague of your heart. May the Lord show it more and more. It will excite your love to the dear Jesus, Lord Jesus more servantly. I return my love to your sister. I thought her now she had been with Jesus. I believe she has the grace of God in truth, and therefore our Lord will make her conqueror over all. I am glad to hear of the success of the gospel in Biston. It is a gathering time there, but a winning time with us here. All is ordered for the good of the church by Christ Jesus. Let us, my dear brother, keep close to him in this and every trying time. We shall find but few, very few, true followers of the Lamb of God. May you and I be in the happy number. God is pleased to give success to the world preached. Though I am opposed much, Jesus is my strength. The Lord will enable me to fight his battles. My love to Peggy and all that love Jesus. Forget not, forget not to pray for your affectionate friend and servant in Christ, G.W. End of letter 284. The works of the Reverend George Whitfield, Volume 1. Letter 285. To Mr. T. Bristol. May 23, 1741. Dear Sir, I am glad to receive a letter from you. I was fearful. At least I had done something to offend you. I thank you and... The other gentleman for your kind invitation to me to Scotland. I believe it will be a near three months before I can see Edinburgh. On Monday I set out for London. Then I purpose God willing to go into Exus, and then to return through Bristol and Wales in my way to you. I entreat all the brethren to pray for me, that I may come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. I am a poor, weak, unworthy worm. God hath been with me here and in Glathenshire. In Wiltshire there is a great awakening. Abroad in New England the work goes on wonderfully. Oh, dear sir, never was such a weak wrench sent on such an important errand. I have many trials of various kinds. Jesus supports me. Jesus makes me more than conqueror. He is a dear and a very tender master. Dear sir, help me to praise him. I will write to all the gentlemen that wrote to me, if I can any way redeem time. In the meanwhile, be pleased to remember me to them in the kindest manner, and believe me to be your affectionate though unworthy brother and servant in Christ, G.W. End of letter 285